my night, my life tonight. <laughs> Enjoy this. The Lobos. We're going to start with Steve on the right for Draymond. Hi, Draymond. Um, uh, Andre, when he was in here, made an interesting point, I thought. He was talking about the, um, the chemistry of your core, you and Steph and Clay being together. And he, he mentioned them in, from the standpoint of they grew up in NBA lives and that maybe your background, a little grittier, brought more of an edge. How do you think that that chemistry, that mix of your personalities has, you know, fed this whole this whole run it's it's amazing because none of us are the same and you know you usually clash with people when you're alike and i think the one thing that's constant for us um is winning is the most important thing and that is always the goal that is always the main focus it's not it, it's not <laughs> This is Olive, everyone. I know y'all don't usually get to see her. She is the life of all of this, um, this family. But, uh, you know, um, I'm sorry, Steve. I totally lost my train. Oh, you know, for, for us, it's just about getting back to these moments and, and, and winning. And we know what that feels like. And ultimately, uh, we know what that takes. Please stop making the noise, big man. Um, and, and we know what that takes. And we rely on each other. We depend on each other for uh, you know, for if 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 I may struggle in one area, uh, Steph just isn't going to go try to do it. You know, we we rely on each other for for what we're great at, and it still has not been proven when we hold. And anybody can stop it. Om on the left. Draymond Om Young was a yes man. Congrats. Thank you. Om, oh, there's a lot of sparges in here tonight. <laughs> I missed and, them. And I'm about to go uh, turn up with them <laughs> uh, when we done. What does winning finals MVP do for Steph's career? I mean, he's done so much. He's one of only seven guys that's won finals MVP, regular MVP, scoring title, all-star MVP. Um, and also, uh, you talked about how no one has knocked you guys off when you guys are healthy. What's next for you guys? How far can you guys take this as you guys have four now? I'm not sure. Um, you know, I don't, I don't like to put a number on things. Uh, and, and say, oh man, we can get five, or we can get six, or you know, we're gonna get them until the wheels fall off. And you know, that's our goal to compete at this level every year. I think, you know, when you look at a guy like Steph Curry to have the season that he's had, to have the career that he's had, it's absolutely amazing. And to stamp that with a finals MVP, um, I know he said it don't matter, you know, and and it doesn't matter in the sense of like, Oh, well, he's not, his legacy is not quite this unless he gets that. Like, that's garbage. Um, still Steph Curry, still an all-time great. But to add that to your resume as a competitor, you want that, you know? And, you know, for him, well-deserved. Uh, it's been a long time in the making. But he left no doubt. Left no doubt. And he carried us. And we're here as champions. Davide on the left. Hi, there, everyone. Davide Chinellato with the Gazzetta from Italy. I have two for you. The first one is about you know sharing uh, this championship with your children. How does it make you feel? And the other one is what you would have told to yourself uh, when you enter the NBA now. Like, um, it's absolutely amazing to share this with my kids. One of them not being up here, my wife and my brother and my you know my mom. Um, it, it's. You know, this is what you do it for. I've always said, you know, I, I want to, one of my motivations to get back to playing at a high level was because they weren't old enough to remember me playing at a high level. Um, you look at the last two years prior to this one, and, you know, you think of their ages that they've gone on the last two years. She was four, he was two. Like, they didn't remember anything. And so a huge part of my motivation coming into this year was to show them that, you know, I can be at this level and to give them an understanding and, you know, to, to ultimately close it out, you know, I always say, you know, during the playoffs, like my family takes a, a back seat to, to everything. Everyone does, everything does. It's all about what can I do to put myself in a better position um, to win a championship, to, to close out a series, to play good games and, and, 
that requires an um a, a, in such a high amount of focus and you know I, I didn't see them all day today like they're sitting in the same hotel didn't see them all day like but ultimately it's a sacrifice and you know try to get them to understand but the things that they don't understand, once they see the prize at the end, it, it'll better help them understand and, and teaching them how to work. And if you do work hard, there are prizes at the end. And I think for me to share these experiences with them is uh, that's what the journey is all about. We'll go to Michael on the right. Michael Pina, Sports Illustrated. Uh, Draymond, can you just speak to how important and impressive your team's defense was throughout these finals? Uh, you know, we've always uh, spoke about our, our defense, and, um, I mean, it, it's been a constant for us. You know, we've won championships, and, you know, I think the lowest defense we've had winning a championship was like seven or eight. Um, and, and But when you have such a sexy offense uh, and, and, you know, guys shooting the ball like Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and Jordan Poole, when you have that, it's always going to be sexier and people are always going to appreciate that more. And like, Oh, well, if you look at their offense, like we beat this team because of our defense, you know, there were, I don't know. Did they score a hundred points tonight? That's what four out of six games. They didn't score a hundred points. We beat them because of our defense. And that's always been a constant for us. You don't win a championship without a great defense. And we know that we understand that we pride ourselves on the defense and ultimately understanding that, our defense will allow our offense to flourish. CJ on the right. Not sure if you uh, plan on recording tonight, but if you are, it should be one I am. Heck I'm of about to episode, record huh? back there. Should be one heck of an episode, huh? Yeah, Draymond Green show uh, live from the NBA Finals. <laughs> it's about to go down back there. So y'all look out. <laughs> it's going to be an incredible episode. And I, <clears throat> I told y'all on there before, don't let us win. Uh, Everybody got mad at me for cussing with my kids up here. Do you know the rest? Uh, championship. And they let us win championship, and you're going to hear about it. So tune in. This is going to be epic. Jordan Poole going to be on there. Might have Steph Curry on there. Might have Klay Thompson on there. Might have Olive on there. <laughs> DJ on there. It's going to be an incredible episode. Watch out. We'll go to New media. It's what we do. We'll go to Chris in the back with the final question. Y'all gonna get this podcast, Andre? Huh? Y'all gonna get this podcast, huh? They gonna get this oh, podcast. Right. <laughs> Ain't nobody complain. All playoffs have a couple bad games. Stop doing the podcast. It ain't stopping. Y'all gonna get this podcast. <laughs> they gonna get it all summer and next year too. It's here. It is what it is. <laughs> Drake, congrats, brother. Thank you, brother. Uh, I wanted to ask, what was the, the adjustment like for you during this series as you had the crowd doing what they doing, saying what they saying, and it seemed like it was an adjustment for you to kind of get through that? Can you walk me through the process? Uh, game three, it just caught me off guard. You know, like you've, you've heard crowds boo, and I had never heard an entire crowd yelling F you Draymond. Like that was that was a different thing. <clears throat> and then so you couple that with having a so-so game. And it's like, oh man. And then I thought, you know, um, you know, when I speak of the new media, uh then and going into game four, it was made out like, oh, he's having this terrible series. <clears throat> but if you know basketball and you watch game one, I did not have a bad game one, and I had an incredible game two. And game three was kind of like terrible, awful. Um, and game four was like not my best effort, but not totally terrible, you know. And game five, game five, I was pretty solid. Came out with great energy. Game six, I dominated. Um, but if you you know you you read these narratives, I saw I saw. I think Stephen A said, like, he's having the most horrific finals of an NBA starter in the history. Like, dude, you ain't got to be that. You ain't got to exaggerate that much. That's ridiculous. You know, but you'll hear more about that on the podcast tonight. But, um, you know, for me, it was just about staying the course. And I knew that I hadn't had a great game yet. I had good games. I was clamping and 
doing things, but I hadn't quite put it all together yet. And for me, I said, what better, what better time than to put it together tonight? I don't think I heard F you Draymond all night. They couldn't. So, you know, uh, it's easy to chant F you when somebody having a bad game, but can you do that when they having a great game? I didn't hear much of it tonight. Maybe I was just that locked in, but second team to win and close it out in, in, in TD Garden, right? Why not us? Who better than us? Four times. Who better than us? Okay. All right, sit. All right, y'all sit down. Good to go. We good? <laughs> Say peace. 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 DJ. I didn't.